Really, really pleased with um, coming off a long break. You know, I, I, I was scared for a while that we, we practiced too much. We'd have a lot of rust on initially coming into this game. And, and Lemoyne just beat Buffalo, so they, they had a really, really good game against a tough Buffalo team on the road. Um, and so what I'm most proud of is the way our kids practiced this week. They had intent, and they had a purpose, and they had discipline. And the things we actually worked on this week – we executed in the game, um, especially offensively. And our pace, um, against St. John's, we had zero transition points, zero. Today, we had 29. We worked on getting back to who we were, Phoenix-wise, um, running in transition and really scoring easy baskets. Also, picking when we're going to press and trying to disrupt the game and, and increase the game so we could get more possessions, um, especially when we're not shooting the ball well. So we worked on those two things, and rebounding was the third. So when you look at transition points, 29, when you look at the score, 97 points, and you look at 20 offensive rebounds, you can be happy as a coach that everything you worked on for the past 10 days, the kids took to heart, and then they executed within the game. So that's really, really um, glad about that. And uh, questions? Coach Bruce, did you talk at the beginning of the, uh, <clears throat> beginning of the game about um, Education Day? Um, after the game, what are your thoughts on just the atmosphere with all the students in the Ryan Center and how they kind of helped, uh, helped be a good crowd for the, for the players? I love Education Day. It's really hard as a coach. As I've been sick, so I've been sick for a week. I have no voice, so I couldn't, I couldn't even hear myself think or let alone communicate to my team, so we were using hand signals. But it's so very important. It's why... I, you know, I know men, men's teams have a hard time doing it because they sell out, but for the women's game, Play for K and Education Day are two of the most important um, game days in the season. And I love it because it, it gives young kids an opportunity to see, again, what's possible. They, we, I did the same thing when I was young. We, I went to Penn State on my Education Day and supported their women's basketball, and I dreamt about going to college and being able to play on that stage. And, and that's what you live for. It's why you play the game. It's why I coach, you pay it forward. And so it's so very important for kids to see what their future or their possibilities could look like um, if you do well in school. And if you have that dream of going on to college and furthering your education or maybe even playing at that level. And so I love it. It's, it's my favorite days and I wish everywhere we went was an education day. Whether we go to St. Louis, I wish it was. Ed I wish the gym was full of kids. Um, they don't know why they're screaming; they're just screaming. But as a player, it, there's no better feeling than having that atmosphere. Um, and they're they're really great from start to finish. They are incredible. Keisha, what did you think of the crowd tonight? Oh man, loud. It was real loud. Um, but I, I enjoyed the kids. Um, feels good to play in front of like people that look up to you and see what they could become. So it was really good. Keisha, did, did the group need a break? Did they need some time to you know, practice and, and get back to what you felt like you would be at the start of the year? I think we just need to reset our mindset. I think we just came out and yeah, played our basketball today. Because it seemed like you know there were so many games offensively where it was just a, a struggle. Mm -hmm. And today it was so free flowing and, and uh, smooth, and, and it looked like it was fun to play today. Yeah, we just had to get back to us. Sophie, tying the program record in an atmosphere like that, what I think I saw at the end of the game, your sister here, what did it feel? To, how did it feel to do that in front of a crowd like that? And <coughs> your sister? Um, it was just really fun. Um, like the atmosphere was great. It was. It just gave our whole team like so much energy, and obviously I was um, like proud of myself for being able to accomplish that today. Um, but it definitely doesn't change like our mindset, our whole team. Like we got to get back on track to playing like this all the time. Um, so I think it was a great um, opportunity for us to do that today. Tell them about your sister yesterday. What'd she get? She got I think their player of the game for uh, they played UMass yesterday. 
So she got the player of the game. She had like four threes, I think. She was four for five. And Soph went to the game to support, you know, her sister, oh, and then picked up Lily, brought her here, and then Lily supported her today, um, which I think is. And then Big Soph got the player of the game today. So you know, it must be a twin thing. It was in the water. Um, Bill, going back to your question, I think it's an excellent question of perspective and someone who knows the game. As a coach, I did think we needed to reset. I think ever since Maine, we lost our confidence shooting with the ball. Now, you guys can say what you are, that you can't shoot, you can't shoot. You say it enough, they believe it. I knew we could shoot. I know we can shoot. But that Maine game, sometimes when you lose your confidence a little bit and then you struggle to score, you know, we, have, we play well at NC State, but then we lose a heartbreaker to Quinnipiac. We miss free throws. We shoot the ball poor again. Then we go to Prob. We shoot the ball poor again. We miss free throws. We lose a game again by a point. That momentum carries in, in players' minds. I don't know how many of you play sports, but it, sports is an 80% mental, a 20% physical. And they were, they were in their heads. And so having that long break was a reset for us of – how do we play and who we are? And let's practice it and get back to it and have the confidence and practice that if we can do it here, this is what we can do in a game. And today, after that first maybe eight minutes, nine minutes, it started to come back. And they started to believe. And when one shot goes down, it's funny. The positive can take you and momentum can carry you. And the negative can just be as negative. And one of the things I had to get my mind wrapped around was the negative. They don't respond well to it. They don't. So if I'm negative, and I, I can be accountable and I can be a hard coach, but I can't be a negative coach when they're already beating themselves up mentally. So yes, we needed that reset to get back to playing fast, getting our confidence back, kind of letting those horrible losses dissipate and get some momentum in a positive direction. And today was the start. I told them the week was the start. Our practices were really good, even our bench. Our kids who came off the bench, they, they earned time today because they practiced. I wasn't going to play them if they didn't practice hard. I don't care what the score is. They earned that this week. It made us better. So, yes, Bill, answering your question, as a coach, we needed this, this 10 days greatly to get their minds right and then work on who we needed to become again. And they had to believe that. And today was that first trending in the upward that I, I first seen it in competition. As you get sort of deep into conference play later in the season, are you going to look back at this as sort of a turnaround point from, from that mental fatigue that you were talking about? You know, no. I'll, I'll look at the first day of practice after Christmas break. If they're <coughs> – you can't – it's not games that win you. You can't, you can't show up on game day. It's what we do when we come back. Do we have that same hunger? Are they still starving? Are they still competing? Are they still disciplined with intent and purpose? And then do we stack that for Harvard? I, I'll know how we're going to play in Harvard by our first our, our two days of prep. I'll know. I knew how we were going to play at Prop. I knew how we were going to play at St. John's. I knew. It wasn't a surprise to me. So in practice is when I'll know. If we come in and we get after it those two days, I'll be a pretty confident coach going into Harvard. We're ready to stack. We're ready to stack. And then momentum. Then you stack again and again. It's what happened last year with last year's team. We lost three games in the preseason. We lost Wake. We lost Princeton and Wake right before Christmas break, both of them. And then we came out of Christmas break, great practices. They were hungry. And then the momentum started building. And, and I tell them that all the time. If you don't show up ready to play or practice, you will get beat. And I don't care who it is. Anyone can beat anyone this year. And if you don't believe me, just look. There are teams that were undefeated that got rocked by 30. By 30 before Christmas break. How does that happen? You're ranked 23rd in the country and you lose by 30? Come on, you weren't ready to play. So I believe that on the men's side and I believe that on the women's side. Anyone can beat anyone. And so we gotta be ready and we gotta be focused and locked in and hungry. And anything can happen in conference play, anything. And I think we played a pretty tough schedule. I, I really do, Princeton, NC State, and even the teams we played, Prob and St. John, on the road, Big East teams, they're not easy gets. It's not like we played an 0-10 team. St. John's went on to beat Villanova after they beat us. Villanova's a pretty good team. So anything can happen, and that's what I tell them. And, and hopefully in a month I'll say the momentum, and I'll say, yeah, 
this, this, these two weeks were huge for us. This was the, the change that we needed, trending in the positive. You had Eva in the game in the first quarter. What, what has she done maybe in practice uh, that's, that's you know, earned a little bit of trust there and earned a little bit of time? Played with a motor, played hard. I call her, Eva's the chillest person I've ever seen. She's just chill. And, and sometimes that's how she plays. Not sprinting the floor, not boxing out, not. So it wasn't that Ava can score, Ava can shoot it. That's why we brought her here. Ava had to earn the minutes. Ava had to compete. Did Ava compete this week in practice? Yes. yes. Like it meant, like I'm, I'm playing. I've had enough of this. I'll get, it is earned. I don't care what everyone, just put her in. It's hilarious to me, fans on the forum boards. She just play so and so. Dude, are you in practice for a month? Yeah, so and so was late to the bus, didn't practice hard, didn't rebound, but I'm just going to throw him in. Like, that's magically, she's going to be able to just suddenly play. Come on, man. They earn it. And boy, Eva, Katie, all of them, they earned their minutes this week. They really did. And, and Eva was going to play today, regardless of the score. That's why she got early minutes, because she earned it. She earned herself into the rotation. Coach, sometimes you see teams relying on one person to score the points on any given night. Today you have three players hovering around 20 points. What does that mean to you as a coach to see you can go to different options? Well, again, that is why we brought these kids in, you know, initially. And sometimes it, it takes time to develop roles and responsibilities and chemistry together. Um, and it just wasn't coming together yet. They weren't finding, am I shoot? Do I shoot it now? Do I not shoot it? Do I give it to my aid? Do I not do it? And it, it was like every possession, someone would do something that didn't flow in our chemistry. So when, when Bill's going, God, you had no flow offensive. Yeah. So-and-so would forget to cut. So-and-so wouldn't set a screen. She would pass up a shot and turn it over. And it was like every possession was like that for like two weeks. And we just didn't have that chemistry. But I know what they can do. Otherwise, we wouldn't have recruited. I know Tisha can score. I know Didi can get to the rim and score. I know, I know Soph and Eva can shoot it. But again, sometimes it takes time. And it is very frustrating that it doesn't click right away. As a coach, it is. And you start to question, oh, well, maybe. But again, the belief is we brought these kids in with a certain skill set. Now it's our job as coaches to get them those pieces to fit, that they find they're, they're comfortable in their roles and then they develop the chemistry within each other. Sometimes it takes longer than other, other times. Um, today, you saw what, when they're all clicking, what the possibility is. Again, can we stack it? Can we get consistent? Are they getting comfortable with what they do? Um, and that's the key and that's, Again, keeping that, that momentum going and, and having them believe that, believe it. Having Tisha believe that she's a great three-point shooter, that she doesn't pass him up, and she takes him, you know? Having Eva feel the same way. Dee Dee, that she can get to the rim and hunt the paint. Inez, hunt the paint. Doing what they do, their specialties, all of them. They all have what they're supposed to do. Now, as, as guys, if you can analyze that and go, I know what Inez does. This is what her best qualities are. This is what Tisha does. This is what you should be able from day one to know what, what each player's role is on the team. And right now, when you first watched us play the past like week, three weeks, I don't know if you could say that. God, I don't know what her specialty is. I don't know what she does because they haven't found that rhythm yet, but it's coming. And we had it again, they found it in practice and it translated to a game. And now it's just building that momentum. And they have the confidence to do it. Sophie, your specialty is three-point shooting today. Um, when the crowd <laughs> goes wild on the first one, or maybe as the game goes along, how does that help you as the game goes along, having the crowd behind you? I think it just like makes it more fun to be like in the game and in the moment. Um, it's just like really exciting, especially like being there as a kid and like doing the same thing and now like be on the court but I think it was just great to like have the Ryan Center full of fans and um, just cheering for us. Any other questions for players or coach? Coach, uh, Anel 
got the start today. She had a double double in the last game out, and she had 14 more rebounds today. What have you seen from her in the last couple games? Well, in practice, you know, AD's just, you know, she's given us a little bit <coughs> better rebounding, a lot more pace in the way we play, and. Um, Going smaller enables us to get up and down a little bit better. And, and again, she's earned the minutes in practice. She stole the starting spot. And again, with me, you earn it. Nothing is given. And I will give you a chance to redeem yourself, and I'll, I'll only go so long. But if, if you're not rowing the same way, you know, someone else, those minutes, as Dawn Staley said, those minutes have to go to someone else. They have to. And that's part of our culture. If you're not practicing hard and you're not getting it done in practice, those minutes are going to be gobbled up by somebody. And um, AD's been playing really well, uh, crashing the boards, doing what she does best. And so has Sophie Sent. That's why you've seen her get some minutes in the past couple games as she's been practicing really, really hard. So, uh, again, AD's gotten back to being AD. And for us, she kills. She just hits the glass so hard. She really does. And causes us to be able to run break. If you don't rebound and box out, you can't run. Today, we, we rebounded and we got out. And, and again, that's a key. And if you're not going to crash the boards and go get box out and go get rebounds, you're killing us in every aspect of the game. We're not getting enough shots, especially when we're not shooting the ball when you don't O-board. And when you don't box out, we can't run. So now it's a half-court struggle. I don't want to see 44 points on the board ever again. So I'm playing kids who have a motor who want to get to the glass, and it, it just helps us be who we're supposed to be. Tammy, you touched on it, but you're playing Harvard. I know you guys have gone back and forth over the past few years. We know how good the Ivy is this year. Just what do you see in that matchup? You know, Harvard, they're, they're an excellent, excellent basketball team. Well coached. Um, unfortunately, they have a really bad injury at the point guard. Harmony Turner um, got injured, and she's missed everything. I mean, this kid is good. Um, but it doesn't take away from how good the Harvard team is. So it's going to be a battle. And it's a really good test. We have a really short turnaround between St. Louis and Harvard. We play Harvard the 28th. we got to get on a plane and go play St. Louis on the 30th. Um, and so we're focused right now on Harvard. Again, we're 0-2. They beat us twice last year. And so this is a really good test, and we have them at home. And, again, we'll see coming out of Christmas break when we show up if we're ready to practice. But it's going to take, again, who we are. We're going to have to play very, very well and be who we are in order to beat Harvard. We, we are. And so um, it's going to be a really good test before we start conference play in, in the A-10. And I'm looking forward to the game. I, I always look forward to playing Princeton and Harvard. I love it. For Again, knock on wood, for whatever reason, the games are super competitive, super competitive. Um, and I love basketball games like that. So it'll be a battle. All right, thank you very much, everyone. Have a great holiday, and we'll see you for Harvard. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Merry you. Christmas. Enjoy the game tonight. You guys all staying? Yes. Oh, God, you got a long day. <laughs> what time is it? A long day of watching basketball. Yeah. Really tough. It's one thirty. What time's the game? Six? Six. Yeah, that's fine. Where are you going? New Tavern? Hey. <laughs> nah, go to Back 40.